about halfway through, Mikhail. That seems, uh, I think that might be slightly easier. Départ euh, qui va être imminent pour un, à peu près 8 bateaux dans cette finale B du double féminin. C'est placé pour l'instant juste avant la ligne de départ pour se lancer. Voilà, départ à l'instant lancé pour entre autres Cassie du côté français. On a donc euh, 8 bateaux dont le bateau des états unis dans cette euh, catégorie du double féminin. So we're just starting to get underway. France 10 show their bows strongly off the start. Mikhail, perhaps I'll have France 10. They, uh, it's certainly a strong start. They've got a two length advantage already. So that seems fair to me. They're pursued by Denmark up in second place. The midfield's strong though. There's five boats, uh, four boats make that running almost dead level. Denmark four is at the back of the pack. So France 10 at the front of the field uh, ahead of Denmark three in second. Uh, then it gets quite tough to choose. USA 1, USA 1 in third. Uh, they're managing... To, actually, USA 1 look quite good. They've built quite slowly from the start, but they're in third uh, after about 150 meters, and it's quite a strong third ahead of Spain. Avec une petite fausse pelle euh, du côté de Cassie euh, qui avait fait un excellent départ, le bateau euh, France 10, et euh, qui euh, se retrouve maintenant euh, à distance euh, plus courte euh, de deux équipages. Le peloton est assez groupé. Euh, Cassie en tête pour l'instant avec le Danemark et les états unis qui ont pris euh, maintenant euh, la volonté euh, de revenir. On retrouve également un bateau espagnol dans euh, ce euh, groupe de tête qui, euh, pour l'instant, regroupe tout le monde sous euh, les impulsions américaines. Les États-Unis veulent remettre tout le monde d'équerre. Well, the field's starting to spread as USA really open the taps. They throw their bows in front of the field, and in fact, they hold clear water. France 10, my early favorite, the fast starting crew, slip into second, third, fourth place. Commentators curse, I'm sorry about that, ladies. Uh, they've dropped into fourth, although they maintain their lead to Denmark three in fifth. Peru are running in sixth place out of Denmark four, uh, currently at the back of the pack. Over on the far side, Spain are running in ooh, second or third place. Tough to choose at the moment. They run uh, France 10, I would say. Perhaps they're back up into second. Perhaps my early favorite are uh, recovering and back into second place. On retrouve maintenant uh, clairement au commandement les États-Unis qui ont uh, pris uh, leur marque uh, maintenant pour uh, ce bateau uh, dont uh, une des deux rameuses a fait partie. Uh, des bateaux olympiques des États-Unis à Rio et avec ensuite la Grèce sous l'Allemagne. On n'arrive pas trop à distinguer le numéro du bateau. Face à la France, Cassie, suivi par l'Espagne, le Danemark, le Pérou et enfin le bateau danois 4 qui ferme la marche. So it's USA that make the best of it. Uh, they make their way through the front of the field. Over on the far side, it's Germany, I think, that move up in to second place. They're ahead of France in third place. That's France 10. They lead Spain 2, currently in fourth. Then Denmark 3 lead Peru 1, and Denmark 4 at the back of the pack. So this field of seven crews starting to spread now as we make our way towards the first marker. We're about 650, perhaps 700 meters in, but it's USA who really have managed to make a move. They uh, had they built slowly from the start, I think it's fair to say. It's quite a relaxed start. They built quickly to find their cruising speed, as their compatriots said earlier. They said that they wanted to find their cruising speed early on and then just sit there and notch away the miles. Now, that's certainly um, what the women's double from the USA is doing now at the front of the field. Germany in second place, some three and a half lengths astern, with France 10 and Spain 2 battling it out in the midfield. Une course maintenant qui s'avère menée deux mains de maître par les États-Unis d'Amérique qui sont clairement au commandement. La deuxième position est allemande. Alors qu'ensuite, eh bien, l'Espagne revient et a pris l'avantage sur le bateau de Cassie. Espagne qui tente de faire l'effort de rester au contact. Un contact maintenant qui s'éloigne face au bateau allemand alors que devant les Américaines caracolent en tête. Le duel entre le bateau danois et le Pérou anime eh bien l'arrière de ce groupe de quatre qui sert de peloton, alors que devant on a une échappée solitaire des états unis et en contre partie seule les contrées, les Allemandes, alors que maintenant l'Espagne fait l'effort en tête de ce peloton 
de 4 pour décrocher les rameuses de Cassis alors que le Pérou maintenant vient de prendre l'ascendant sur le Danemark. USA 1 maintain, they probably don't build on their lead, but they certainly maintain their strong advantage at the front of the field. They've got their eyes firmly set on that marker, which is uh, the most easterly point of the course before they turn a little bit north, uh, just to round that hairpin and make their way back in. Their advantage stands at four lengths clear water now ahead of Germany. Uh, right, Germany three, I believe, running in second place ahead of Spain two and third. That's a similar distance between first and second and second and third. France ten, only a length and a half down though on Spain two. So we could again see changes in the mid. Peru run in fifth place now. They're about two lengths down on France ten in fourth. Then we find ourselves with the two Danish crews at the moment bringing up the back of the pack. Des positions euh, maintenant euh, qui sont clairement stabilisées avec les états unis au commandement euh, qui ont pris euh, maintenant 4 à 5 longueurs d'avance sur le bateau allemand qui lui a à peu près 3 longueurs d'avance sur le bateau espagnol. L'Espagnol euh, suivi euh, comme son nom hein, par les rameuses françaises de Cassis alors que le Pérou ensuite en cinquième position a pris l'ascendant sur les deux bateaux danois. Le Pérou maintenant qui cherche à revenir sur le bateau français mais devant quel démonstration, quel brio pour les Américaines qui sont clairement du pays, euh, du côté du pays de l'oncle Sam au commandement euh, sans coup férir de cette finale B du double féminin. Well, it's the USA still, no surprises there. It is in fact Great Britain 3, I do apologize, not Germany, who set in pursuit of them. So it's USA followed by Great Britain 03. Those two crews actually closing on that red boy very, very quickly indeed. Four crews sit quite close. That's Spain, uh, France is in the mix there, one of the Danish crews as well. Those should get there, and that could be where we see upset. We have seen some crews just go straight past the boy. They're well on their way towards the Italian border, not far from here. But remembering to turn north, we hope USA 1 will take the uh, boy in first place. Their advantage is about 20 seconds. So even if they have some minor mishap, they should manage to retain their first place as they turn north and inland before they start that long haul back towards the finish line. USA currently in first place. Le virement s'approche au niveau de la bouée avec les États-Unis en tête. Ce ne sont pas toutes nos excuses les Allemandes mais les Britanniques. Elles étaient éloignées de nous, difficile à voir les Britanniques en deuxième position suivies par l'Espagne et Cassie. Attention au passage de la bouée avec toujours les Américaines qui en tête, virement des Américaines, c'est fait. Top États-Unis. On déclenche le coup. Maintenant, le virement des Britanniques. Les Britanniques qui vont être à plus maintenant de 7 à 8 secondes. On est à peu près à 10 secondes maintenant pour les Britanniques. 10 secondes d'écart. Ensuite, on va retrouver l'Espagne, Cassie et le Pérou. Toujours l'avantage pour les Américaines qui mènent maintenant les débats, suivis par les Britanniques. L'Espagne, top virement de l'Espagne. Avec ensuite Cassie pour la France. Top pour Cassie. Attention, le passage maintenant pour le Pérou. Le Pérou qui voit quand même les Danoises à faible distance. Top pour le Pérou. Vous voyez donc, on est sur un, un groupe des poursuivants assez serré, alors que les Britanniques sont en contre-chasse du bateau américain qui est parti tout seul. Well, the USA is showing their pedigree at the front of the field. Strong rowing family there indeed. Uh, they're out in front, the former Olympian holding in first place. They in turn lead Great Britain in second, Spain in third, France 10 in fourth, Peru run in fifth place ahead, Denmark three in sixth, and Denmark four in seventh. So strictly a Danish affair, unfortunately, at the back of the pack. Peru are hosts from last year in Lima, making up ground against France, 10, my early favorite, and our early leaders there in fourth place. USA, though, looking very, very strong as they make the move ready to round that last boy and head for home. Toujours à la, au virement maintenant de la deuxième bouée, le commandement clair et net euh, américain, alors qu'en deuxième position, les Britanniques voient le jour euh, s'écarter encore plus. Virement américain, c'est fait maintenant pour les Américaines 
qui euh, vire en tête avec ensuite les Britanniques qui voient revenir maintenant progressivement l'Espagne. Ce sont bien les Américaines qui créent l'écart au maximum. Le passage des Britanniques, nous sommes maintenant à plus de... Top 16 secondes, 16 secondes d'écart entre les, euh, les Américaines et les Britanniques. Ensuite, on retrouve l'Espagne, la France pour Cassie, suivi par le Pérou. L'Espagne vire maintenant avec euh, eh bien, 30 secondes d'écart. Il y a 15 secondes d'écart entre la tête de course, la deuxième place, et à nouveau 15 secondes entre la deuxième et la troisième place. Une course limpide sous commandement et sous pavillon américain. 16 seconds, the gap between first and second. That's the USA and Great Britain as they round the third of four boys demarking the course. That quite a big gap when you see it on the water. 16 seconds may not sound that much uh, in a race of 20 minutes, but it looks considerable. There's a similar lead between Great Britain ahead of Spain running in third place. France tenor in fourth, they maintain an advantage to Portugal. Uh, they in turn lead both of the crews from Denmark. We're just coming up towards that last boy. It's still the USA, no uh, surprises there. These positions again look quite set. France 10 have made good ground against Spain though, so they could yet feature in the top three in this final. On vient de virer la troisième bouée avec toujours ce commandement très net des états unis alors que pour la troisième place, eh bien, les affaires ne sont pas terminées parce que Cassie cherche à revenir sur l'Espagne. Pour la première et deuxième position, c'est du côté des anglo-saxons. Il n'y aura aucune discussion possible parce que les Américaines ne sont maintenant sont clairement imprenables. En deuxième position, les Britanniques. Mais ensuite, eh bien, rien n'est fait. On essaie de refermer le peloton maintenant. Euh, les Espagnols qui essaient de garder l'avantage pour la troisième place. Mais derrière, eh bien, il y a Cassie, il y a le Pérou et il y a peut-être le Danemark qui essaie maintenant de recoller morceau par morceau. On essaie de grappiller du retard sur les Espagnols qu'on sent peut-être un tout petit peu fragile et qu'on peut peut-être aller déborder dans la fin de parcours. Well, this USA crew, perhaps a little closer to home than you might think here on the waters in Monaco. Grace Latz and Sydney Axon, uh, both of Vespa Boat Club, uh, was the boat club of the legendary single scholar Jack Kelly, uh, related to Grace Kelly, of course, who married into the royal family of Monaco. Here they are on uh, almost their, maybe their home waters in law, we can call that, and making it look easy at the front of the field. That advantage certainly paying dividend to them at the front of the field. Their advantage to Great Britain now stands, it must be more than 25 seconds. Seconds. Spain 2 go wide, which gives France 10 the opportunity to make their way up the inside of the course. France 10, I think, will jump into the top three as Spain 6 go very, very deep towards the shore. They've come too far north, I think, on uh, their way back towards the course. Um, straight shot to home, perhaps, for the Spanish, but they need to turn inside to get back on course towards that last red boy that dog legs home. On assiste pour la troisième place à une bagarre rangée entre l'Espagne et la France avec Cassie. Cassie qui a décidé de partir très au large, très à l'extérieur, pour peut-être ensuite fondre de trois quarts et profiter de quelques tentatives de vagues pour revenir. Est-ce la bonne stratégie On va le voir progressivement. Alors que les Espagnols occupent la troisième place, quatrième donc, Cassie, cinquième, elle est bien évidemment, elles suivent. Les Péruviennes, elles sont dans le sillage des Françaises, avec les Danoises également présents. Un groupe de trois qui cherche à revenir sur le bateau espagnol. Devant, eh bien, c'est le Vesper Boat Club de la famille Kelly, grande famille euh, de, euh, également euh, de la famille euh, régnante euh, monégasque qui donc, euh, du côté de Philadelphie, est en train de caracoler en tête, même si elles sont un peu plus chahutées dans cette partie où on voit une lame de fond un peu plus importante euh, faire un peu plus de vagues. Euh, les Britanniques en deuxième place. So the USA still looking very, very good out in front of the field, Vespa Boat Club. Uh, they are on their way towards that last red marker boy. I'm just trying to get a glimpse of it myself. There we go. It's still at least 600, perhaps 700 meters away from here. So it's a good long haul for them to make their way to that. Great Britain run in second place. Their lead perhaps starting to shrink as France 10 make their move against Spain 6. Now, those two crews are abreast of each other, realistically, but there must be 40 or 50 meters separating the two crews. Then we find ourselves 
pursued by two more crews astern of them. But one of those double skulls has dropped way, way, way off the pack. We've got four together here, two out in front. But that seventh crew, we uh, seem to have lost some distance off the main race pack at this point. On retrouve clairement les Américains au commandement deuxième place des Britanniques. Il n'y a pas de difficulté, mais alors là, pour la troisième place, c'est extrêmement intéressant parce que eh bien, les Espagnols sont sous la menace directe du duel France-Pérou. Cassis-Pérou qui est en train d'animer à l'extérieur, donc on vous le disait. Les Espagnols sont quasiment sur la même ligne que les Françaises. Et Fran Well, we've seemed to lost uh, our commentary boat there. Hopefully they didn't sink in the Mediterranean, but uh, we'll pick it up from here with the USA still leading. A comfortable lead for uh, Grace Latz and uh, Sydney Axon of uh, Vesper Boat Club from Philadelphia, who uh, sort of uh, uh, came back from a nasty loss there in the heats. They had to adapt to uh, the uh, different situation. They're used to flat water rowing, and now it's coastal rowing, a lot more chops and waves, and uh, a lot more difficulty to get themselves uh, over uh, the ocean here, or over the sea here at the Mediterranean, at Monaco. And uh, they're doing just fine in the B final. Uh, sadly, though, not in the A final, but they're uh, going to win an event here nonetheless. Uh, second place still for uh, Great Britain. So well done by uh, the two rowers from Devil's Elbow Rowing Club, one of the more interesting uh, sounding uh, rowing clubs uh, of uh, that we've seen so far. Uh, Nicola Cheeseman and Erica Gummery, who are racing in that particular boat. And then it's pretty close between uh, Spain and France. So the two Mediterranean countries making it very, very interesting in the final stretch towards the line. And uh, there you go, uh, Spain, France, also Peru in there, as you can see on the picture. Peru won, trying to get into the mix. Uh, the two rowers from Club de Regatas Lima, the venue that hosted the um, World Rowing Coastal Championships a year ago. But still uh, in the front uh, by a comfortable margin, that's uh, Grace Latz and uh, Sydney Axon. You can see them there in the middle of their picture in the black boat with the white blades and the USA unisuits uh, striking uh, very, very, uh, very nicely. And in hot pursuit, still these two Spanish ladies with the uh, nice uh, sleeves there in the colors of, I think, that would be uh, uh, the local, uh, yeah, Catalonia. Catalonia, I think, the colors of Catalonia there in the sleeves of the stroke woman. But uh, looking very good as well, They're trying to chase down the USA. But uh, here they come towards one of the last boys before they turn again towards the finish line. Grace Latz and Sydney Axon, USA 1 of Vesper Boat Club. And uh, just sorry to interrupt, but we are looking for Anne-Marie Phelps. Could you please, Anne-Marie, go to the pontoon urgently? Thank you. Donc euh, je reviens à deux minutes sur, euh, sur la course. En fait, c'est les USA là dans la finale B du double euh, dame euh, qui va l'emporter. Vous les voyez là de dos, euh, les, les, les USC du Vesper Boat Club avec euh, grâce là de euh, Sydney Axon. En deuxième position, c'est la Grande-Bretagne, donc euh, très euh, anglo-saxon cette course. Et puis nous avons aussi vu quelques belles batailles entre la France et le Pérou. Yep. French, uh, the French and the Peruvians trying to chase down uh, the uh, Brits and the Americans. So a sort of Anglo-Saxon affair there in the front of this B final. The women's double skulls. A little look over the shoulder there by uh, Bauro or Grace Latz trying to see how far the finish line is. But she's closing in because there's only a couple of hundred meters to go. And they have a comfortable lead over Great Britain here in the bow seat. That's uh, Nicola Cheeseman and Erica Gummery in the stroke seat uh, who will... Uh, uh, th I think will be safe for a second in this uh, B final of the women's double skull. Overall, that would place them, I would uh, say, in a comfortable um, 21st spot for the United States crew and then a 22nd spot overall for the Great Britain crew. Pretty tight there uh, near the last boy between uh, the four other crews that are uh, trying to move closer together, sprinting towards the line. This is obviously their last race of this uh, World Rowing Coastal Championships here in uh, Monaco with uh, the French crew, French uh, France 10 of Aviron Club Cassis 2. Uh, they are uh, trying to close in on the competition from Spain, uh, from uh, Denmark, Peru, and uh, obviously also from Great Britain, USA. But uh, Valérie Caillet and uh, Josette Claire Oriema, well, they're still have some work cut out for them to try and catch up uh, with the, the crews leading them on. 
This is the USA. This is the leader of the pack, USA 01, with boat number 209 there to your right with Grace Latz in the bow seat. And then in the stroke seat, that's Sydney Axon. And uh, no match the other crews uh, for these uh, two women. Four kilometers of racing, and they've opened up a considerable gap to the rest of the competition. There you have it, like a 150 meters worth of clear water for the USA over Great Britain. Oui, donc vous le voyez, une fin de course assez simple là pour les états unis pour Vesper Boat Club avec Grace qui avait participé aux Jeux Olympiques à Rio et qui est en congé de son, de son entraînement pour l'instant et qui rame pour la première fois. En fait, c'est sa troisième sortie en mer. C'est pas mal de gagner une finale B dans sa troisième sortie en mer et elle le fait avec, avec brio. Vous voyez la différence entre elle et l'équipe de Grande-Bretagne en deuxième position Devil's Elbow, c'est-à-dire le coude du diable. C'est assez euh, sympa comme, euh, comme clan de club également. Well, as my uh, fellow commentator Pat uh, implies, Devil's Elbow, that would imply actually that there's some fire left in them uh, coming from a very uh, a fiery uh, rowing club in Great Britain. Nicola Cheeseman and Erica Gummery second to the right of your picture. And then to your left, you can see the Spanish duo of uh, Club Nautique Betulo, uh, Merke Feliu and Lourdes Puig Baraka, who are in third place right now. But uh, here come the winners of the B final, placing themselves 21st overall with Olympian Grace Latz of the women's quadruple skull coming across the Rhine right now. Her third outing, I believe, so uh, not bad at all, coming 21st at your first ever World Rowing Coastal Championships. And uh, that explains the smiles on their faces. They uh, survived the ordeal uh, with the base, which is getting a little bit more hard to deal with. And uh, here's the British crew coming across the line in second place. A little sprint to the line. That fire is still in their legs, as I just mentioned. And they will place themselves second overall. Devil's Elbow Rowing Club, 22nd in uh, the rankings uh, in this B final. And then uh, it's a little wait for the Spanish crew, the two Danish crews, and the French crew of Aviron Club Cassis 